not so bright. Well, how are you feeling? Hey, as good as you can expect after a fight, I guess. You know, a little bumps and bruises, but pretty happy overall. You get a win, uh, you get to go home and be happy about it no matter what. How did you feel about your performance overall? I wish I would have gotten the finish, like I've already said a couple times, but I think I proved a point of beater every round, I feel like. Uh, went in there, beater striking, beater on the ground, beater grappling with the wrestling. Uh, just as always, want to show that I'm developing, evolving as a fighter, and that I'm well-rounded. You know, you listen to these fight predictions, or at least I do. I almost love listening to them because it cracks me up. And then they'll be like, Miranda has no grappling, Miranda has no striking, like whatever it is. For one, we're in the UFC, all of us are good. Like all of us are already have one of the highest potentials out of any of the athletes that are MMA fighters. And then there's just the matter of watch all the fights. Like I'm evolving, I'm getting better and better. I think I'm a well-rounded fighter and there's only up from here. What did you think of your opponent? Were there any surprises or did the fight go the way that you had anticipated it going? Uh, she was tough, you know, couldn't just submit her right off the ground, uh, but everything was expected. We had a perfect game plan for it as could be seen. Um, she came in there hard and fast the first round as we knew. Um, she attempted a takedown a couple times, it didn't work out, and we were just ready for it all. She, of course, did the throw, we were ready for that too, but obviously we all make mistakes. She ended up getting one um, and was able to reverse that and get on top. But yeah, nothing unexpected. Do you ever get um, kind of psyched out by coaches that you see? Like she had Cyborg in her corner. Does that <laughs> give you a little bit of a pause at all or do you think about that? Or not at all. I mean, I have elite coaches in my corner too. It's not like my coaches have no experience and even if they didn't, it's about their coaching uh, ability and my ability to go off of that and have my own fight IQ as well. I don't care who they have in their corner, if it's a current champ, if it's an ex-opponent uh, of mine, if it's a teammate of mine, I really don't care. I'm in there to fight. I'm in there to show my best potential. They aren't the people in their corners. What's uh, the plan for you next? When would you like to fight again? Do you have an opponent in mind? I'd love to fight in October. I don't have a specific opponent in mind yet. Maybe I'll be calling out one soon enough, but I just want a top 15 opponent. Um, I got my opponent, Tracy, taken from me to fight last weekend against Rose, who was one of my main training partners for this camp. Uh, ended up getting somebody who was not a top 15 opponent, which so be it. You know, I get paid the same either way, but I'm trying to move up. I'm not trying to be a uh, gatekeeper without giving the consent of being a gatekeeper. What did you think of her performance? Like when you think about her performance versus how you, you might have fought her, what, what did you think of that? If I were her, I wouldn't want to fight me. What did you think of the weight cut where she cut her hair and all that? And, you know, maybe she has weight cuts that are hard all the time, but uh, I don't see it as being any more empathetic than I was for anyone else. A lot of interviews I saw that were like, oh, Tracy was coming off the couch and she took it on two weeks' notice. And I'm like, no, she wasn't. She was supposed to fight me this weekend. Like, she was ready to go. Maybe she had a hard cut anyway, and that was one step harder for her to have it a week early. But we all make sacrifices to be in this sport. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. And this is just a f kind of a funny one. Um, DC admitted on air that he had never... <laughs> seen Top Gun before. Really? Yeah, so he's... He was, can't be an American? Tell him to crazy. get to it. He, <laughs> he saw it now, but he said that all of your previous walkouts, he never understood. That's depressing. Yeah, so... I just How could you not funny. get that? Yeah. Come on, DC. I'm disappointed. No wonder he gave me the mic, you know? He must have felt bad. A little bit yeah, of grief probably. there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Miranda, just one. Um, what did you think about the 28-28 or 29-28 scorecard? We were just talking about that back there. Um, you know, she had the throw and she had an elbow and I controlled the rest of the round basically. So it's weird how judges are. Um, you know, obviously it went my way either way, but had that been a closer fight, like that's really frustrating. I've been robbed before pretty badly back when I fought Macy and um, it always like really frustrates me when that's how the judges see it is based on two little moves within a whole round of a fight. Um, but to me, it's like at the same time, man, I'm going in there trying to finish it every time. I try not to give the judges any doubt anymore at all. Uh, I don't think it was before when I got robbed, but um, go in there and try to get the finish every second of the fight and judge wants to see it that way. I guess we will eventually figure out some system of uh, vetting these judges better. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is it a top 15 or nothing? For the next one? Oh heck no! I'm not going to turn down money. <laughs> I'm here to get. I'm here to get paid. Yes. Uh, well, my coaches are saying yes. We need a top 15. All right. Well, there we go. 
There we go. I mean, it's got to be tough because I know you guys want to stay active. You want to keep your skills. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, you got to stand up for what you want. I mean, but it, so if they come to, are you really going to try to emphasize them? Like, please, I, I deserve yeah, it. We show. already have, you know, I've talked to the matchmaker. He guarantees that's going to be the case anyway. Mick's already apologized for taking Tracy as an opponent. So I hope he'll stick by his word and I'll get a fight coming up soon against the top 15 opponent. That's what I would expect to, to have that integrity and make that actually happen. You talked a little bit about the predictions and all the comments that you see beforehand. Does, does that ever give you a put a chip on your shoulder when you come into the fights to kind of want to prove the, the, the analysts and the experts wrong when they make these wrong predictions? Not really, you know, but at the same time, it's always nuts to me, like, uh, that these people are able to even say what they are and have people that follow them and go bet on fights based on what they say. It's like, man, go watch a fight and see if they're right or wrong about one of these people at least. But it, it's amusing to me, if anything. It doesn't ever bother me whether it's against me or for me. Usually I end up laughing by the end of the video no matter who it is or what it is. There's only a couple out there that watch everybody's fights and really get an analyst point of view. Instead of just seeing the last performance or looking at who they've lost again, be like, oh, they lost to so-and-so, they must be a sucky grappler, you know? And I always just crack up when I hear that kind of stuff. How much of the, uh, your purse or your winning purse do you uh, a lot for your your side businesses, the the pickle business, <laughs> the uh, I try Bloody not to allot any of it for it. Um, I know this kind of sounds crazy, but I try to have businesses that kind of take care of themselves. So of course, I have to pay for it initially, but I also have a job outside of fighting. For those that don't know, I work for the Hershey Company in a full time position. Um, it's one of those careers that everybody would like to have, and I do that plus this fighting to make my dreams come true outside of the cage. You know, I'm not here uh, just to be a fighter. This isn't the only aspect of my life that I have going on, and I plan on making a future for myself and my family both with my platform and with my side hustles. I didn't know. I'm Count me as one of the ones that didn't yeah. know about the Hershey. What do you You're do good. for Hershey? I'm a statistician, so I got a little bit of a brain in there, you know? What, what, <laughs> like you count how many chocolate bars people eat? Or no, what? so uh, <laughs> any media any media that you see, commercials, social media, that kind of thing, advertising any kind of Hershey product, I'm the one that sees if those advertisements pay off for them. I'm the one that I does the cost-risk analyses. I make all the tables and charts that get sent up to the VPs of marketing and stuff. That makes a lot of sense. Well, yeah. now, especially when I see you marketing your business, now now it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever get inspiration? I mean, obviously, you had the bloody Miranda. Are there any, every <laughs> other inspirations that come from training or maybe have you ever been grappling on the ground and then all of a sudden you get we have the ground and pound pickle uh, jam you know we got a lot of different things I, I work with several different people to make the prowlerpickles.com now I have my honey the pickles the bloody Mary's Miranda's are coming out uh, in two weeks so I'm hoping that that keeps growing if you guys want to support go check out prowlerpickles.com it has all of it on there um, but not really a motivation from that I'd say a lot of it's from my raising you know I grew up homesteading a lot we had our own milk cows we had our own chickens we had our own bees I, I literally bought honeybees when I was like 12 years old right so a lot of it just comes from the way I was raised and trying to kind of go back to that and uh, not only have great healthy food at home but now for other people as well and, and you mentioned that I know you told us when we when you saw the early in their week but if you want to kind of shortcut it I thought that was the neatest story when you said about what you bought when you were 12 years old yeah. if you want to kind of reiterate that story yeah, what started your love so um, I bought honeybees when I was 12 years old it was some of my savings one of the first big purchases I ever made was beehives I went to a beekeepers association and learned about them for like six weeks uh, got in some swarms which are the wild bees that people call in the animal control basically got those put them in the hives and we started having honey on the ranch and now we still have those hives back home and I'm just growing and working with other local beekeepers to uh, bring it to local Missouri people and local Colorado people um, working with beekeepers in both of those areas right now. And I know you're, you're kind of an extreme sport already. Do you ever get calls to go rescue bees when they show up in random lo I do locations? not do that. Now I a uh, little bit tamed down from that side of things. I just let the professionals take care of that and I take them from them in a box. <laughs> Congrats on your victory. Thank you. Right over just a quick one. Uh, obviously, uh, Chris Cyborg was in your opponent's corner, like they mentioned. <laughs> As a fan of the sport and someone part of women's MMA, mm -hmm. she's kind of hinted of maybe coming back one day to the UFC. Is that something you'd like to see? Uh, I mean, it's always exciting to see people that kind of inspired me growing up, but I, I don't care really either way. I'm not going to be fighting her, you know. I hope that she has a great future, whether it's inside the sport or out of it. Um, a lot of these women who I watch growing up in the sport are, are an inspiration to me, but it's not like I'm like, whoo, yay, Chris is coming in. I'm one of those people that isn't really a fangirl of other fighters, so to speak, but I do have a lot of respect for all of them, and whatever she decides, I hope she has a healthy and bright future.
Last one. What is the toughest part about balancing everything you do in life? Time. Man, I wish I had more hours in the day, you know, but um, I have a lot of support system around me, whether it be in the cage, outside of the cage, my family. Um, I have a lot of support there, and I get to delegate and slowly find help, which is part of the reason I start all these businesses. I get to say, hey, uh, this family member, you take this over. This family member, you take that over. And hopefully it just keeps growing from there and makes it to where it's a whole uh, family enterprise that can keep going. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you for sharing what you did with Kenny mm -hmm. about the, the Hershey stuff. Yeah. Speaking of which, that was a sweet performance. <laughs> and we've seen... <laughs> Hey, that was almost better than she was in a pickle, you know? I was waiting for it. <laughs> um, as the brand grows, whether it be business in the cage or outside, um, we're halfway through the year. You're hopefully getting the top 15. What's the second half of the year looking like? For Man, it better not be hopefully. I better get in the top 15. I was already number 14 with Andrea. I mean, I just put on a performance. Like, why am I not already there and stay there? Just because somebody else is more popular or some crap. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, but I appreciate that because it kind of leads to the next question. It's now it's more like you got to balance that, get the dubs, get the wins, mm -hmm. look awesome doing it, but also the brand. How, how much of a are you incorporating that so people know you as not a talker, but just like even the walkout today? Yeah. You know, listen, I, I hope people remember me. You know, I tell fans and stuff that don't like know UFC super well. I'm like, just remember Maverick. Remember Top Gun. Go check me out. You're going to find me, right? Uh, my actual name's Miranda Maverick. That in and of itself is a solid brand to walk with. Um, and I try to be a person that has integrity and I'm humble within the sport, but I'm also very confident. I don't need to talk crap and stuff. But man, if somebody wants to uh, strike my ire, I guess they can talk crap and we can keep it going. I'm smart enough to keep up with the wittiness at least. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and people love it. It's it's crazy, right? That we're like mm -hmm. half, like yeah, we respect that. You know, nobody yeah. needs to talk, but then also it just brings more awareness. Right. And you have that platform, so yeah. so why not assess the your division for me? We have a, a reigning champion. We just had a big fight with Rose. Like, how's how's everything falling into place? Man, uh, we have a few people that are obviously going to be in the top five, top ten for a while. I think uh, Macy's the young up-and-comer, Aaron Blanchfield. We have Man, and we have Valentina. We have Alexa. I think those are some name stakes that are going to stay up there. I think Rose is one of those new ones that's going to be staying up there. And I plan on being thrown in that same fray. I think I'm top ten material right now, um, and it's time for me to just go out and actually put my name into that. Um, and I can only do so much on my end, you know, get in there and win the fights. It's time for them to just put the right people in front of me. That's awesome. And, and last for me, as you continue to grow just in and out of that cage, we've seen even the physique be different. <laughs> what are you, are you doing different compared to just the fighter that you were just a year ago, but now you're just levels above that? Yeah, we were joking about that too. I'm honestly a little lighter than I was walking into the cage, so that's a lot of it, I think, is just uh, leanness this time around for whatever reason. Maybe I'm not shoving as much food in my mouth the night before. I'm not sure. Uh, but I try to stay healthy year-round all the time, and I think that just slowly adds on to my nutrition, to my conditioning. Um, I've always been strong, always had a solid physique in there, and I think I'm just getting to where it's all coming together. You know, I've got the skills. Um, I've got the genetic for it. I've got the work that I've put into it. It's all coming together. Whatever I look like in the cage isn't like on purpose. Like I'm like, oh, I need to work on this one little muscle. Like I go in there, I look how I look, but I know I have the skill to back up whatever it is. Awesome stuff. Congrats on the win, Brenda. Thank you. Good. All right. Thank you. No, two to one favorite.